Uh, my name is Ryan Sweeney. Uh, I own Localized Group LLC. Uh, we have a hydroponic farm in Edina, Minnesota, and we service uh, the Twin Cities area. So before I was starting farming, I was working in the uh, renewable energy sector, primarily with biomass generation, um, distributed biomass generation. And that's kind of what the distributive aspect of, of energy generation is kind of what brought me to where I am and why I wanted to start Localize. Um, when I started doing research on this space, I saw a lot of opportunity and a lot of good that could be done for the community. Uh, and kind of saw the writing on the wall that uh, the future of the food industry is gonna have to change. And becoming hyper-local and uh, implementing the same distributive model that I was using with the renewable energy stuff into the food system uh, was a really good way to do that. Yeah, we uh, started out fairly small, um, built a brand, um, started packaging all of our herbs, uh, but we were kind of stuck to uh, a single herb based on our capacity initially. And so then we expanded into a zip farm system and a warehouse. And uh, by doing so, we were able to reduce our costs and uh, expand to a full uh, packaged herb line. Right now the primary business is the packaged herbs uh, and kind of filling out that herb line. Um, about 50% of our sales are to co cooperative grocery stores here in the Twin Cities and then the remaining 50% is to larger regional big box stores. Localize is actually a, a, a political producer that I inherited when I moved here from another job. Uh, it was already in place, but we found these opportunities with other herb, uh, that herbs that Localize is growing to expand that business and better meet that mission of our co-op and deliver uh, on local sustainable food to our members. I think Localize uh, identified a great opportunity. They were already doing basil almost year round. Uh, successfully and identified that there were a lot of other herbs that are not sold locally through most of the year because of the climate and the particular uh, growing techniques and systems that they have in place now allow them to do that where pretty much any other producer we're in contact with can't and the the ability to, to, to look at what's needed in the market and strategize a way to deliver and that's really the best way to get into uh, get into a new market. Everything that Ryan is growing right now with Localize, we can get very easily through a national or regional distributor, and it will come from Mexico, and a little later in the season, it will come from California. Uh, having Ryan's products, his herb products, in our store gives our customer base and our members uh, a local option where none other existed before. Uh, and that's a huge part of our mission as a co-op, uh, and that's a huge part of why uh, co-op members shop with us. That's what they want to support. They, they've said that in surveys, they've said that with how they vote with their dollars. Uh, that's what they're looking for, and this is, this is a unique opportunity for them. The response from from our consumers is kind of what keeps me going. Like, I get comments all the time on how great your products is. I love the whole story. You're here in in the heart of the Twin Cities, but also just the quality. Like when they open up the clamshells and smell it and taste it, it's most people that I've dealt with are just blown away. On a typical typical Thursday, we'll have three to four employees in uh, at 7 a.m. 
uh, and they'll just start working on, on the harvesting and packaging and labeling, uh, boxing everything up based on which customer is getting what. Uh, so while we're doing deliveries or one or two of us is doing deliveries, uh, we, get, we have the employees clean up after the harvest disinfect and sanitize again all the food contact surfaces. We usually break them up a little bit, get two of them going on transplanting, and then one or two of them doing uh, seeding and getting those going in the propagation chamber and moving things between the propagation chamber and the seedling rack. So when I started, it was basically just um, me, Vincent, Ryan, Susan, and Gary. Um, Susan, Gary being his partners, his partners, and then Vincent and I kind of being on that entry level doing the basics around here. Um, and yeah, it's super small, so we like we know everything. We do basically everything. We have if we have any questions, um, we can just get them answered by Ryan because he basically knows the whole system. But even though it's small, there's a ton of potential for growth, and we're there along the way for that. So um, we're always in the know about any opportunities that we have, and yeah, how how the business is doing and how it's growing. So there's a lot of exciting things to be happening. It's not going to stay too small for too long, I don't think. Actually, what I want to do like for a living is anything in um, urban sustainable agriculture because just with our growing population and the majority of that growth being in cities we're gonna have a lot higher food demands but we also have to simultaneously limit and reduce our environmental impact and so with a system like this where you take away like the thousands of mile transport you know usually food on your plate takes like 15,000, or not 15,000, 1,500 miles to get there. Um, so you're eliminating that and also eliminating um, some of the intensive like um, fertilizers that are needed. You save a ton of water in these kind of systems and stuff like that. So we are reducing that environmental impact while um, maximizing our yield, or so we're helping that um, food demand that we're gonna see here in the next few decades. There's really hasn't been a good answer to the, the problem that agriculture, well, no, I shouldn't say agriculture in general, but the sort of agriculture where you take like a bunch of land and you turn its biomass into like one thing to create more human biomass, you know, that sort of like really simplistic way of looking at it. So, you know, there really hasn't been a good answer to like, okay, what do we do about that? Because we have a lot of people, a lot of them need to be fed. Do we keep um, like answering by converting more land and you know kind of uh, homogenizing the planet, or can we get like smarter about it? And I think once we reach that urban threshold where we got critical mass, where people were now living mostly in urban environments, uh, it became like this really feasible idea to think up instead of out, you know, and to start getting more creative with. Um, the sorts of innovation that come from cities, come from people uh, living together in great groups, sharing ideas, but also from like the obvious urgency of like having to do something, you know, to uh, be more um, conscientious about how we manage our resources. It seems, just being in the industry for the last five, six years, uh, that the trend's only going up as far as the demand for locally sourced goods. People, like all the produce managers I've been talking to and end users, value the locality of the food and how close it is uh, versus organic. So my, my favorite thing about being involved in the local food movement is being able to offer my community, my very specific community, uh, a local food option in the middle of winter when nothing else is available. Um, and then seeing seeing how people react to that, because it's kind of a game changer for a lot of people who, who really don't know anything about uh, controlled environment indoor ag agriculture. So that's that's kind of my motivation, is, is expanding that uh, kind of excitement that I see out of end users and, and customers about being able to get stuff year round.